The GA Hour with Colin Parkinson is brought to you by Paddy Power, home of the Money Back Special. Well, when I started running, I suppose I didn't stop, and when I got the chance to go, I said I should go, and so I opened up. We were only the small little fish out there, so we are, and uh, we're trying hard to make it through. But it's hard to get the breaks when you're the smaller fish. Because I love this county so much, you know, and it's just, I'm delighted that the lads, the lads did it for the people of Walford today, because, like, I, I'm, har- I'm heartbroken. <laughs> Big news in the hurling world is that Eamon O'Shea is back in with Tipperary. Cheddar and Michael are here in studio with me. And like, I mean, he was with um, Liam Sheedy when they won the All-Ireland Cheddar. And it just seems like this is a no-brainer. And it's actually Liam Sheedy is on record for saying that it's one of the first phone calls that he would have made when he was coming back in. You're the manager, get in your favourite coach. And he's a very highly rated coach. Didn't get to win the All-Ireland when he's a manager. But um, it probably isn't the biggest surprise in the world, actually. No, um, it isn't. Um, look, let's just talk about Eamon O'Shea, the man, first of all. Um, look, Eamon is a professor in NUIG, as a lot of hurling people know, um, and, you know, has published a lot of really important uh, papers on, on the area that that, um, that he works in. And he sort of, sort of even aside from that, um, works a lot with ageing population and with dementia and that has produced a lot of really important and has, you know, has really served, I suppose, Irish society outside of hurling a lot in, in, in the last couple of years. Um, and, you know, I'd also say he would be hugely respected, but actually is a very respectful man as well. And I know in my time as manager of Leash, um, would have always played practice matches and, you know, would have been very honest in appraisal and things like that. So so on a personal level, I would have a huge time for him. And, um, and I think, you know, his philosophy on hurling would suit Tipperary. He likes, uh, you know, free flowing hurling, I suppose, uh, skillful hurling, opening up space in the forwards. But it's probably a little bit different. Then we'll say, you know, I've, I've discussed, um, you know, what I see Paul Kinnark doing in Limerick and that, which is a little bit more structured than what he did in, in Clare. Um, I think Eamon does sort of, you know, gives the tools to the players to be able to do the job rather than maybe having it as much structured um, as we see. Now, look, that could change. Um, the only thing I'd say is that, look, t- tip at the minute in the last couple of years, I think, are sort of searching for a way of playing, a style of play. And I think Eamon will bring that to him. He's very, very, you know, he, he thinks an awful lot about the game. Um, and I think he'll do that with him. And, you know, he really gets forward coaching and creation of space and all of that. And look, Tip have some serious forwards who you might say in the last couple of years, you know, I'm not so sure that the game, you know, suited the way the John McGrath and that play and the Noel McGrath play. Um, so, and I think... Uh, you know, so I think he'll solve a, a lot of that, and I think marry that then to Liam Sheedy's intensity. Like Tip have definitely raised the intensity of their play here and their work rate and that, and then just bed in the team, get the right players in the right place, and look, you have a fair, you have a fair start on getting Tipperary back to being a competitive team again. Um, so I, I think it's uh, there's a real positive. Look, there's some negatives about it as well. Um, you know where you know in terms of his role within the management team you know where does Tommy and where where does Dara fit into that and you know because Tommy's a coach too and a highly respected yeah. coach isn't he huge respect and so would Dara uh, Dara Eganby um, you know so like all of those things would not need to be very clear beforehand I'd have no doubt that Liam would have had a, all of those things well sorted out beforehand real clarity on the roles within the team here but I do see a lot of positive uh, um, you know there's more positive certainly than negatives about Eamon coming in to an organ. It's, it's, it, bear in mind it's into his own home county um, but look there's a little bit of a health warning on that it worked the last time just press the button it'll work the next time mm. look that rarely happens it, so it's what they're going to do and uh, you know the transformation that they're going to get into their team and there's some serious issues to fix in their team um, you know we've discussed this a lot last year you know the, their, their central positions need to be fixed their pace around the middle third needs to be fixed and certainly their distribution of all into forwards needs to change or, you know radically I think towards what they were doing over the last couple of years so there's a lot of work to do but there's incredible talent to be able to work with there and I think Eamon has that level of intelligence and you know just knowledge about how to make the thing work that I think he'll bring an awful lot to that management team I hope it's not a situation Michael where um, you know Eamon can you do this Jeez, I can't really Liam but probably a little bit too busy Tommy can you do this yeah, yeah. I can then Eamon, then Eamon rings up I can do that actually Eamon. oh shit right well yeah. Tommy will you take the back Sam and you take the forward <laughs> I'm no, sure that's not how no, it worked no, out no I, I doubt it I, like, when you see Liam, <laughs> Liam's statement he's, he's coming in after the league and um, obviously he's hugely respected everyone you hear, you hear speak about him hugely respects the man and I've no doubt that he spoke about his management to the management team about it before any of this happened, you know. And like with Tommy Dunn there and Eamon coming in, like they like I, Tommy trained me with Dublin. He's 
brilliant coach. Like, Raylan yeah. was one of the best coaches I've ever had. And does he coach both backs and forwards, or does no, he? No, yeah, backs and forwards. Yeah, just a general hurling coach, really. Right. Like you know, but the experience the man has, you know, and he's a real um, determination about him and concentration. Like he'd be very serious training, and he, he when he came into us, he was actually a bit cautious about. Am I being a bit too serious, lads? Because I think he went in hell for leather with the tip lads in his first stint, and I didn't know. I don't know if it went down too too well. But when he came back, to, when he came to us, he was absolutely brilliant, and I couldn't say a bad word about him. But if you bring Eamon in on top of that, like it's a hugely experienced team to have there. Yeah. And uh, as as Cheddar said, with the distribution was the main aspect of the trouble that's been given tip for the last few years, and I think you can see it in their game over the last few league games. They're the, the distribution was so much better than what it was. So. Yeah, well, I think Tipperary's problem is an identity crisis in mm. that, like, I mean, I, I don't, like, obviously, that's, I'm, you're the experts here, but this is my uneducated view, is in that I'm, when you say what's Tipperary's style of play now, it's, it's not, you can tell Limericks, you can tell Galways, you could tell Kilkenny's are a little bit confused as well. I think mm. that Tipperary and Kilkenny are trying to move slightly away from their traditional game and not really knowing how to go as far as Limerick have gone. Would that be, you know what I mean? Or, or Clare, or Cork, who completely changed the difference. So I think they're, they're stuck halfway between the two. I don't think it's following, uh, that would be, would be following a fashion, and anybody who knows Liam Sheedy, he would be following a fashion, I can tell you. Um, so it's really to do with the, the, the type of player that you have. And, you know, but he, if he's playing Bubbles and Noel McGrath in the half forward line, he's not playing lads, they're class scoring <laughs> forward. So he's not really putting workers yeah. there. He's only got one. Whereas Limerick have a half forward line with class and workers and GPS road runners and mm. you, na- yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's the point I'm making, really, Willie. I suppose um, do they have ball winning half forwards? If they don't have it, they're going to have their distribution. Then is very very different. And I, I think if you looked at the stats of Tipperary in the last couple of years, um, and this is no fault of Michael Ryan. I, I need to qualify that uh, he's been a brilliant manager, one in All Ireland, and sometimes, particularly last year, got a bit of you know, bad press um, and it really wasn't his fault. But Tip do need to fix this. This is the type of player to have up front. Uh, they have a lot of really skillful uh, players. Might need a little bit more pace, but but they're very, very skillful stick men and, you know, very good conversion of ch- of chances. But those chances need to arrive um, maybe 70-30 in a forward's favour, not a contested ball. And a lot of the stuff they were doing last year was just a simple diagonal ball across the field. Party might be playing wing back as they did in the league final below in Kilkenny and, and knocked a lot of ball across the field. But look, defences, their systems eat that up now. You need to be much more sophisticated and have a number of things going on as well to really throw good defences, you know, uh, off of that. So I, I think that's where, um, you know, obviously Tip need to fix defensive. They're, 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 they're just conceding too much at the minute and they're moving players around at the defence too much and they haven't fixed three and... Is and, pace uh, a problem in their defence and their forward line? Uh, it, look, uh, I, I think touch and and skill and all of that probably negates pace. Um, and, uh, you know, h- I suppose hurling intelligence. In other words, you'll get to the ball quicker than yeah. the other person is because you think quicker than he does. Um, I, I think that negates pace to a certain extent. Uh, but if you are going to play in defensive wing forwards, then you need leggy runners because they cannot just have a defensive role. They also have to have an offensive role. And their run through the middle is what's opening up the other defence and, you know, making defenders to look out for where they're coming from and that. Um, so I think they have a good little bit to do in terms of looking at the style of play and looking at the players that will fit into that. But I think if they do and they get it right, you know, they are serious contenders. They have incredible uh, talent at their disposal. Yeah, we've gone a little bit into analysis there, I was keeping that for part three, but that's <laughs> you, you brought it there, lads, not me. Yeah. So, um, another one, one I want to talk about. I saw this stat, Martin Brehany. I don't think I've ever used anything belonging to him on this show before, <laughs> right. but there's a first time for everything. But I like numbers and I like stats, yeah. and I thought this was interesting. Cork have the highest return from freeze, 44% of their scores have come from freeze so far in the first three D- Division 1A rounds, followed by Kilkenny on 42%. Tipperary 38, Wexford 32, Limerick 31 and Clare only 27%. So yeah. Clare getting a lot from play. And I'm just wondering, is there anything to read into this? Now, we know Cork have really fast forwards that take you on and they're just being pulled down, you know? And yeah. then I would look at Kilkenny not far off that and I think, well, maybe Kilkenny don't really have that same mm. style of forward. So uh, my theory on why Cork <laughs> were getting that money from Freeze, I thought maybe Kilkenny doesn't stack that up, but uh, I'm not too sure what you think. Well, the first thing's for us, they have the best free, free taker in Ireland, Patrick Horgan. That's he's phenomenal. Fact, yeah. Like, you know, he just doesn't miss that man for anywhere from 75, 80 yards. He's, he's unreal, will he? And again, they do take on forwards, but Kilkenny do it as well. Like they mightn't be as pacey, but the second that Kilkenny man gets the ball, 
he, he runs at you. He runs at you. Like any men don't tend to go backwards or sideways. They run straight at you. Right. So it's very hard. So you failed him or you dispossessed him. So I'd say that's that's the reason Michael Kenny are up there as well. Okay, you know? so, so for Kenny are pretty you know, much the similar they're really to Cork. Good. They're very aggressive when they get the ball. And the pace wise, they wouldn't be up there with Cork, but it's just they're very aggressive when they get the ball. It's route one all the time. And that's why they create so much goal chances. Yeah. So and what would you put Clare being so Clare almost half of Cork Cheddar? Is there anything like I mean, how the, it's a bit of a disparity there now. I don't know if we could read anything into it or Clare uh, not taking lads on an offer or they. Uh, like I, I pay no attention to statistics, <laughs> really, until I see the context of them and and all of that. Um, I, I, I'd worry from Clare in, in, in a different sense that they do seem to concede a lot yeah. of frees to that type of team. Um, and look, I said this last year. I just think that their defensive screen and particularly their full back line needs to be a little bit tighter and not concede those. One thing that's glaring from this, though, is it's absolutely crucial to have a nine out of ten free taker in you know in the way the game is going. I mean, Pat Horgan scored fifteen points from frees mm. of what was it, one twenty? So you know, one five came from play. Like that's a, that's a, no, look, that, that's a little bit of a damning statistic on Cork as well, to be honest with you. Uh, but it's also one on Clare conceding that you know, knowing going out that Pat Horgan's going to be taking frees and to concede fifteen handy scores to them, it wouldn't be good. And, yeah. and, and look, it may, you know, as Michael has said, it may very well be that the pace in the Cork attack. And look, teams do this now. The the, the, the primary possession winner's first thing is to take on the player, eyeball him, and you either have to foul him or you draw, he, he draws in you as a defender and then he pops off to pass to the runners. You know, it's not that all the teams are doing that. Um, so there is going to be frees. And it goes back and maybe a point, Willie, to what Brian Carl said the last of that, 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 you know, you really need to, to coach the technique of the tackle now oh, for absolutely. defenders and forwards. Yeah. Um, because other than that, Pat, you're going to make Pat Horgan an all-star. And he is, he's probably, I'd say he's one of the finest strikers at the ball or the cleanest strikers at the ball I've ever seen and certainly one of the most skillful players. Um, but look, uh, all free takers are like that anyway. There's no point in just saying, well, look, we won't foul against Cork. You know, you're, you're yeah. team, TJ coming into the Kilkenny team. Do you want to foul against Kilkenny and give but, TJ but, another 15? And, and the RFLs that are like, when you watch the clear defence, they struggle to stand people up, Willie. Like, mm. really struggle. Like, if you're coming into a tackle, I hate being static as a defender. I don't like to move with the forward because they have to throw the ball up in the four steps. Yeah. Right, there's your Same chance. as football. It's only That's four you steps where you get the... Like That's Hurland's coaching, more, isn't it, Hurland's really more because they have to throw the ball out. You know, yeah. it's either strike it or throw it out. And you have that really good, like that's your time to tackle. So t- timing is everything. Brendan Bugler used to be brilliant at it. He got away with murder, but he was very clever defender. And that's, like, he wasn't the pace that what, what about JJ? Yeah, and, and J- exactly. <laughs> and JJ, you many times you see that flick coming in. It's just timing is everything. But, it, but know? that's discipline and that's coaching and timing. Absolutely. And I, I, is that I, one-on-one I know, coaching it's, it's, being no, done? It's much more than that. Well, you, I think what's <coughs> really happening here and what re- Limerick are really showing up here is the creation of the space in the forward is now creating one-on-ones. Yeah. So you do need to be a good tackler, but you also need to look at, at closing down the space because if the the forward has time to collect the ball in position, turn quickly and take you on and he's able to do that at pace. Yeah. As Michael is saying, it's it's difficult to, to actually stand them up and force them to go backwards without actually fouling yeah. him. And yeah. look, for, you know, forwards will play for the free if they can. Why wouldn't they if they're going to get a free? Um, so I, I think it, it's not alone that. And of course, it brings you a full circle here now. So how are you going to close down the space? You will rarely see that level of, 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 of uh, frees being conceded to a team that p- plays with a fen- defensive screen or that could be a midfield defensive screen it could be your wing forwards or it could be a sweeper or whatever but one of the problems here is the amount of space around the man in possession that he's ever he's enough time to be able to turn take you on and run at you and look that's difficult to defend against mm. yeah some referees are a little bit whistle happy too like I mean Wexford Tip and, and Liam Sheedy commented on that I thought watching that it was mm. he was a bit whistle happy yeah. and a similar thing in Nolan Park as well a little bit soft freeze maybe and I think if they start giving soft freeze lads this is a, a vicious circle that players will start throwing the shoulder back and maybe playing for them because oh, absolutely. I think it was towards the end of the Wexford tip game and I don't know who did this now I'm not sure if you'll even remember um, it was towards the end and one of the Wexford players threw his hurl back like it was being held yeah. it wasn't being held at all <laughs> that's an old one Willie is it, is that <laughs> an old <laughs> if you're going to someone the hurl stays there for about <laughs> three or four seconds oh I love this so this is a new one now is <laughs> yeah, it that's, uh, that, that's been going around for years Like as you pass a man out you just leave it there for a few seconds ref <laughs> so like he's pulling you back yeah absolutely you know And uh, but most of the time you're holding you, like, you get that mm. hold and release and hold and release and you know you get them little moments in games where you do it but there's definitely this new thing with the refs with a high tackle they're really blowing yeah, up yeah. anything and it's very hard to tackle and hurl them without mm. being a little bit high like you know you can't really keep your hands down too often when you're meeting a fella so I, I don't know I, I'd hate to see every game now becoming like whistle happy as they are because 
there's not that much dirt going on in the league anymore. Like so, lads. No, are, you know, and that's why mm. I'd, I'd hate to see it come in, but it's you know. a directive. I love all these little t- sneaky little <laughs> tricks. Now, like, I mean, Brian Carroll told uh, one on Monday, lads. I don't know if you heard it. He was marking JJ in Nolan Park, and he said that uh, JJ probably won't remember this, but the ball was cleared down from the Offaly defence, and he was beside JJ, and he says, "Well, right, I'm going to." I'm going to have to put it up to this lad now and I'm going to go up and catch it. He says, just when the ball was halfway down, he felt this elbow in the side of the head, right? So he got a good elbow in the side of the head. He went down, his ears were ringing and the funniest part of it, all he could hear lying on the ground was this huge cheer as JJ catches it. <laughs> but I suppose the tricks of the trade That's and hurling are yeah. all new to me. So I'm always, But the leaving the hurl back like yeah, it's being oh, pulled. And the hands out at the same time, like waving at the ref. That's so. a brilliant one. Yeah. I definitely would have used that if I was a hurler. Um, I have this one down because we, we briefly talked about this on Monday, but since you're here, Michael, and Cheddar as well, um, from a management point of view, the Dublin were very disappointing against Galway. Like, I mean, you'd imagine do, do, with Galway not at full strength and Dublin not far off full strength that they would have put yeah. up a better performance. But he brought off young Whiteley after 21 minutes. He brought on young Heatheran after 26 minutes. Yeah. It's Heatheran, isn't it? Yeah. And he had Donald Burke brought on for O'Connell on 35 minutes at half time. Yeah. Now, uh, well, I'll go to you, Cheddar, first because it's from a management point of view. What message are you trying to send your players there? And are you on dangerous ground to, of embarrassing players or have you ever done that? Um, well, you look, again, I don't want to fudge the, the question, Woolly, but you don't know the circumstances. Mm. Were they injured? Were they injured coming no, into the match? No, those three I don't think were injured because Keane O'Callaghan went off in the 38 minute. Now, he had a hamstring Absolutely. injury, so there's nothing about injuries yeah. in the other three. No, or did you tell the player, look, um, I want to see everything you have, I'm going to give you 30 minutes there and you are coming off. You know, was it, were, were all of these things pre-planned? Well, well, just for the sake of the discussion, say they weren't. Um, look, you, you would have thought all of those things through long in advance. This is not some knee-jerk reaction, reaction you would make during the course of the game. You may need to, to give a signal, not necessarily the player taken off, maybe to a whole pile of other players. Um, um, you know, so it, 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 it would be very unusual you would do a just knee-jerk reaction to, to teach a player something because it never works or it rarely works. Um, you, you, you know, there's the old saying of, of people don't remember what you say to them, but they, they remember how you made them feel. And um, you know, you, 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 if if a player sort of feels that the manager has lost confidence in him by by you know making a decision like that, sometimes it's a little while to repair that. I do think that Dublin, um, you know, Dublin are definitely going to change the way they're going to play. Um, and there's going to be you know a lot of changes I think in the in the way Dublin played this year and the way that that they played last year. Um, and to do that, um, look, you have you have no option. You are going to break some delve here, simple as, uh, because you are. Some people are going to be disappointed, and some of those players may be long-standing players. You know who would have seen their future um, under the previous Dublin management for the next couple of years have been central to that, and now that they're not. And I'm going back to the point I think we discussed last year about about uh, Derek McGrath. The man management of that is absolutely critical, and uh, you know, the, just the talk to the player and the chat to the player before and after the match and the next week of training and all of those um, are, I think, are really crucial because all players now are look, they're very, very intelligent. They know what's going on around the place. They can see what's going on in front of them. Maybe in my day, everybody was just delighted to just pull the jersey on and off you went, and you couldn't do anything, and, and and there wouldn't have been any real backlash about those things. But it's crucially important in Dublin, and I think they are going to change. Their way is going to change. How you manage that change is absolutely massive. And look, I know Matty to be in that game in the HR area and that, and he, you know, he knows that to change behaviours and all of those things and to keep everybody aboard and everybody motivated and all that, um, you know, he knows the way to do those things. Um, so I would probably guess that okay, there was there were some fairly serious changes early in the match. Um, but I, I, I think, you know, I, I'd say he had that well planned, not necessarily the, the actual change, but the fallout of the change as well. Right. It's difficult to know, Michael. Like, I mean, I've been brought on and brought off in the same game. My nose didn't go out of joint because I knew like it was probably yeah. the right decision. But I've been taken <coughs> off in other games where I've been absolutely livid. Yeah. And that that's complete bullshit you know and yeah. I don't know like I mean 21 minutes you're the like game giving, was, giving a young lad the game was getting away from them then around that stage really, but I don't think so the corner that, forward gets exactly, it first well, well, that yeah, exactly. great tradition I, I don't the, think yeah. that, change, that change was going to make it but like that it was getting away from them but as, you, as Shedder said you only the manager knows that and the player the big thing for Dublin for me is like it's a huge transformation in Dublin now, not per, not personnel wise, because they're quite a young panel. Like they have the same p- players as last year, but the way Maddie wants them to play is completely different. Like Pat Gilroy played a style of long ball in, win your own ball, and get the ball in quickly to the danger zone. Maddie plays 
nearly every line of the pitch making your way making yeah. the ball makes its way up the pitch it's a dangerous game because you have to take on a man and you have to have confidence in your pass and it's going to break down at times but if he has to implement this game plan and he needs a bit of bedding in time but at the moment Dublin are just sort of trodden along and going nowhere so I, I was very interested to see that can the cool, cool a game plan that works so well for Maddie transfer over to the inter-county at the moment it's not because it's much more it's much harder as a player to pass out a club uh, inter-county player than a club man because most club, most inter-county players now are fitness and they're big and they're much harder to take on yeah. than, than at the club scene where you're going to have a few weak links throughout the, pan, throughout the team so at the moment they're struggling now they have got the players to play well it's a really strong panel with Dublin but at the moment they're just he does. He seems to be struggling to implement that game plan. The with game them, you plan. know, and it's a huge game this this week with Waterford because they, like it was hard to tell the first few weeks where they were at. Like they beat Carlo, they struggled against them at times, but then Carlo put in a great performance against Galway. So he didn't really know where they were at at the moment. But Galway, they really they went down with a limp performance. I wouldn't mind if they went down and their intensity was huge and all, but they lacked everything in the, in the game. Yeah, they, sort of, they could have been beaten by a lot more, you know. So I think it's a huge game this weekend against Waterford, and it's in Parnell Park. I would discuss the ending, and I think the players would as well. Ending with a win this weekend. I think you have to remember as well Limerick's first year with John Kiley. They lost yeah. the player, and there weren't any great shakes at all. And yeah. it was the following year where they saw yeah. the great. And Kenark went always in there the first yeah. year. So, like, I mean, it this takes is a while, a, like, obviously you know? must take a while. So, like, I mean, the disappointing thing for Dublin again, we're getting into analysis in the start <laughs> of the show. But the disappointing thing for Dublin is that because of the change of manager. And because of the manager's <coughs> philosophy, you're actually not building on last year's improvement yeah. really at all. You're, it's like last year didn't really happen, is it? Well, well in this instance, that, that's definitely the case. Um, well, but uh, to be honest with you, I think that needed to happen. Um, mm. I'm not too sure where the game plan from last year was going to go next um, because it was very reliant on, on a couple of sort of yeah. traditional things that you know you could negate pretty quickly with a good defensive game plan. What I was surpri- surprised a little bit about that is actually, actually Fergal Whiteley, is the, uh, and I've seen him play club, uh, and I know what he can do. And I was surprised that he'd be the sort of player that would fit into Matty's game plan. Yeah, absolutely. And he's a very energetic, g- good ball carrier, um, uh, you know, good good at running through the lines and that. So, you know, I was surprised that, that that was the case. But as I said earlier on, look, you don't know the details. And when you don't, I'll certainly, you know, w- wouldn't criticise a move like that. But I would be amazed if it was just made made to teach anybody a lesson. Because, look, th- those things don't work. Uh, conversations and and um, you know good one to one chats with players and that is what works all the other stuff has a short shelf life as far as I can as far as so I can. you might be able to clear something up here Cheddar for us because you've obviously been a manager and you've been around the game a lot longer than us why do the two corner forwards get it <laughs> the very first time no matter, the, no matter where you're losing on the field <laughs> The corner forward gets the curly finger yeah. ahead of everybody else. Can you have? Do you have any theory on why this poor chap in the corner, who's getting starved of ball because there's issues somewhere else in the field, gets dr- pulled in aside and be, is made the scapegoat? I do be amazed with some of that. I, I don't think it's. I don't think you see it as much anymore now. Will yeah. you? But certainly years ago, you you would have seen that. And uh, well, we saw it twice here because yeah. Whiteley and Heather and Bruno. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he afford her out Whiteley does it most of the time, you know. But um, yeah. uh, uh, Brian Carroll would be able to answer this. Like, yeah, it, it's such a. F- my brother played corner forward, and he always got whipped off <laughs> if we mm. weren't playing well. And and. The ball wouldn't necessarily be going up there, will he? So I don't know. It was just an easy option for a manager a lot of the time back I know, in the day. I, I can yeah. see some reasons for that in club, Michael. Because um, mm. generally speaking, the corner forward, he may not have been an out-and-out um, uh, corner forward. He was probably last into the team. Mm. Um, and, um, you know, he's probably in corner forward because the, the your, your main players are on the half-hour line or something like that. Yeah. I could see some reason like that. And then some some fella makes a knee-jerk reaction to something. Say, I'm going to whip somebody off here now because I need freshness in the team or something like that. Sure, the first fella to come off as the last in sort of thing it's like the old HR policies here <laughs> um, but I, I don't think you see that much anymore because I think the all of the things now are so role specific um, so if you see a corner forward being taken off now he's probably not just doing his job in the game plan that you're looking for or a wing forward or something like that and you probably have somebody else there that can do it now that's not saying the next day that could be role reversal the other person could do it for you mm. and I think that, that's the real that's the real where you're really trying to drive to with strength and panel which is what the Kilkenny's and the Dublins have now uh, they probably have two players to play every position in terms of what they're looking for and you really need that strength and depth uh, because look anybody can have a bad day and just play you have a poor form in the day and you just need to change something you do need to change it early um, it wouldn't cost me a thought to change something after 10 minutes if somebody was a critical player in your game plan either wasn't doing or just was having an off day or something like that look you've got to change it you can't lose the match 
Yeah, mm. okay, that's fair enough. Um, modified helmets, lads, before we talk to Johnny McGurk, is modified helmets. So there were some horrific uh, images last week about a uh, hurler uh, getting his hand caught in a helmet that was modified mm. and the face guard going through his middle finger and down into his <laughs> little finger as well. Yeah. How common is this, Michael, that people are going out and... T- do, do they take two bars off and leave one? Yeah, or is well, it well it, not anymore, Willie. Like, when I started, everyone had a modified helmet. Like, like they had a one bar down the middle and then missing all the others. And it was more, they said, seeing, like, you know, you can see the ball better. Can more, like, you, get more, you can see more on the pitch. Yeah. There used to be bars everywhere in the, micro, the old micros, so they were difficult enough to see in. But these days, the, the new Cooper and the new Michaels, they're brilliant. Like there's no, there's no excuse for cutting out bars. Right. So it's either a player just has his own, <laughs> his own superstition or his own, um, his own uh, bad habits. But uh, these days, there's no need to cut them off. When I started, right. everyone had a modified them, and they are. When you cut the bars off, there's very sharp edges on both sides where you cut. So like you're left with like very sharp edges both sides. So if anyone's hands around there, you're gonna cut the hand off. Somebody. Jesus, how are you? And a hurl can get in, or a slitter. So can get in, which makes it more dangerous. And, and the, it doesn't. And your opponents it makes no, no sense at all. So this is just a really bad design on these helmets. Like I mean, sure, I could tell <coughs> you that putting a bar across that up that high doesn't make it. Up, help, yeah, well, not anymore. The, it, years not ago, anymore. Stop the so case, he, he, this fellow might have been wearing an old helmet or yeah, something. I'd say so. Yeah, I don't know. It looks very dangerous, cheddar. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I suppose Michael has, has explained it well. There, sort of personal preference, really, mm. and and particularly, uh, look, it doesn't happen anymore now. But um, um, and I can't comment too much on helmets because there wasn't too many more around. <laughs> no, <way>. no. <laughs> you wore one, though, Cheddar, did you? I did towards the end of my career, and I struggled <laughs> badly. We 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 no we no visors. Just um, the top, I was going to say. Yeah. Just, just the helmet. helmet yeah. And maybe we all had thick schools back then. <laughs> I don't know. Or our, our players today gone a little bit soft. But it's a very serious issue, really. Um, because uh, uh, obviously the changing of it, um, you know, even to the player yourself, you know, once you modify your her, your 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 helmet, and let's say you got a very serious injury, God forbid, insurance, uh, insurance yeah. goes, Michael. You know, and look, oh, right, this yeah. is no different yeah. than a car. You mm. modify your car, and you know, uh, and and you're in an accident, and the insurance assessor comes out and he looks at it on behalf of the insurance company, and says, well, that's not what I yeah. insured you for, um, and look, all bets are off here, I and mean, you're not insured anymore. So look, it's it's, it's the, the, and you know, cover is withdrawn and all of that. So, look, it's a serious issue that needs to be looked at. But I, 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 rather than real heavy rules on it, um, you know, maybe we could look at it a little bit more first. Are there different helmets that we could get out of out of hockey or out of, you know, American football or something like that that might suit some concerns that some players have in terms of sight and all of those things? Um, and, you know, once you go through that and there, there's no other options open to you, well, you probably need to say to a player, look, you're insured while you have this, but when you haven't, you're not. And of course, that raises another issue. Like, uh, like everything else, all of these things are fine when things are going all right. But when things go wrong, you know, you, 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 you know, where do you go? So, if that chap had modified his helmet, and and the um, chap that was injured, in ch- uh, you know, claimed against him, the GA's insurance probably wouldn't cover it. Right. You know, so, so it's, a dangerous like, like game, it's, yeah. it's all right. It's all right, and it's funny, and you know, we make a laugh of. of Tick schools and all of that as I did a minute ago but it's a very very serious issue of it. it's an injury to a player and that should be priority and the player should be priority here at all at the times protecting them in every shape we can even from themselves wearing those type of helmets yeah. but I, I do have some sympathy with it because I struggled even with a helmet I had no visor um, I, I, I suppose I just traversed that time of when we started to wear helmets and I, I, I took me years to get used to it in or around the Camrass rivalry you started wearing a cheddar is that when <laughs> I <laughs> would as well <laughs> <laughs> you, you need some the body, you, you need some body padding for that one <laughs> oh, as well Jesus. Um, could just quickly uh, how much is a helmet and does the county board buy it for you or do you have to buy your own helmet uh, I, I, don't, I think they're 70 euro at the moment like you know and there's no excuse at the moment Willie, because the helmets are brilliant now like the padding is great oh. they're comfortable and you can see loads with them like I'd say that fellow either had an old helmet that he's had for a long time was modified yeah. a long time ago or but does the county board fi- f- footed like it would a pair of boots for you or are you responsible no for idea. your own helmet s- since I started yeah. with Dublin I've had my own helmet it's, mm. helmet's really important it's as a hoarder I, lo- I love right. my helmet you know mm. it's, you sort yeah. of it's look, important it, to you, you know. It, it, it so. is for the same reason. Uh, I mean, it obviously has to fit you. And yeah. um, look, county teams would have, you know, you'd bring four or five with you as spares. Um, but 
you know, it, it might take you four or five minutes to actually, you know, modify the studs on mm. it just to, in terms of, you know, if you have a small head or a big right. head or whatever yeah. the case may be. But it's not a case that you'd say, Cheddar, this lad needs a helmet and get a county board get another one, he'd go away and get I it know, himself. You know, I, I know, I look, you'd have a little bit more pride in yourself, I think, than that holy. And, and, and um, as Michael says, your helmet probably does you for your whole career. It does, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. You know, okay. So. so you get your own helmet, but you ah, get yeah. the boot, you get the boots and stuff like that. It's not the same, yeah, yeah, the you same honour on, yeah. in the boots. You'll, yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll be, <laughs> <laughs> you'll be a tight with the yeah, boots, exactly. not with the helmet alright ok we'll come back and we'll talk to Johnny McGurk Derry are flying high in Division 2B after winning their first three games obviously because they have a leash man in charge but he's not joining joining us on the show his coach and selector Dublin man Johnny McGurk is how's it going Johnny? yeah all good all good Colin come here how did a leash man and a dub end up managing the Derry hurlers? Well, look. Um, after the their manager stepped down, they they um, they were on the lookout, and uh, John got talking to me, and and uh, before we knew it, we were we were on the road to Derry. Right. So, did you interview for it, or were you approached, or how did it work out? Well, uh, John would have would have been speaking to them. So, uh, I think John had some links up there. He was with. Cushioned all last year, doing a bit of work with them, and ah, okay. uh, so it was kind of the 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 northern contact there. So um, so that's how that came about, you know. Right. Okay. So you've been involved, and John, both of you have been involved at different stages with the Dublin Under Twenty Ones. Um, I think John got them to an All Ireland final, and you've been in with Jer Cunningham as a selector. So, like, I mean, you've you would see this as as a next step up, maybe to senior inter county. Well, look at uh, you know. Inter county is something that any 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 man that wants to be involved in either management or or selector or trainer, you know, you, it's great to be dealing with with inter county players like they compared to let's say maybe maybe club players. They have a d- different outlook on it. They they they're fully committed. They want to go at it full on and and uh, yeah, really really enjoying it at the minute. Like, how are you handling the commute? How long are we talking? Or do you go up together in the car? Yeah, we travel up, so so I drive and then John would drive and look, you know, you get a lot of work done on the way up. Whether you're whether you're sitting in the passenger seat with a with a laptop doing some analysis or or organising weeks ahead or months ahead, like you know, you're talking. I suppose with, with a bit of a break on the way up, you're talking anywhere from two and a half to three hours. So uh, up, so. Um, yeah, we'd we we um, we get a lot of, we get, we get a lot of planning done and a lot of work done and and on the way up and on the way back, you know. Yeah, so I suppose that's it. Like, I mean, I think it was Fintan O'Connor who's managing uh, Kerry was saying something similar to me that the commute you double that up on phone calls and you double it up on on things that you kind of need to do, administration stuff that you might need to do. Yeah, like if you kind of compare it to being in Dublin, you 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 because you're you're local and it's kind of fairly consuming. Whereas we you, you can park, you can walk away through the day, you you can you can park a lot of uh, a lot of stuff that you need to get done, knowing that you have the journey up to to sort it all out. So you know you can you on that drive up, you can you can get get a lot of work done. You know, we we get up there. We're organised. We're planned. We 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 get our training done, um, and we're, and we're back down the road, and we're and we're planning ahead. So um, yeah, it works out ideal. So what kind of a squad did you encounter when you went up for your first session? Like, I mean, Derry weren't coming off a great way, a great uh, year last year. They didn't win a league game at all. Um, they got out of the group in the Christie Ring, but then then were beaten. Was it a squad low in confidence, or what did you feel you had to work on? Um, I, I wouldn't even have said that. Like when we went up a force, I think the key, the key was to get the best dairy holders in into the squad and 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 training. Like, uh, you know, from from point of view of last year, look, you know, I uh, what, what went on as far as we were concerned, what went on last year went on last year, and last year was parked. Like, uh, uh, we only looked forward. We were. And I suppose the players looked at that as well. A new management going out, going in, you know, a, a new chance for the players. And you know, even a lot of the Kevin Lynch's lads um, maybe didn't commit last year, and they come into the panel. So like, you know, we we went up and ran trial games, like, and we we 
you know, something in the region of 50 players. So, um, yeah, we've, uh, you know, the panel has been strong from our perspective. We've been delighted with, with, uh, with the energy from, from the off. That's the important thing in the weaker counties. I see it in my own county in Leash. There's a lot of fellas who haven't committed that sometimes getting fellas to commit at the lower levels is a lot more difficult because they don't have the big glamour days, you know, to work towards and things like that. Yeah, like at the end of the day, it's 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 it, you know, firstly they've got to enjoy it. You know, they've got to be fully committed. You can't go half at it. And and I suppose look looking at the the bigger picture, like you know, they can improve their game. Something fierce. They can they can bring bring their own game onto the onto the next level. So. You know, to get into an inter county setup, from our perspective, we have to be organised. We have to have, you know, we have to have the training down to a T. We have to get as much as we can get done when we're up there. So, you know, so far, you know, and and again, every time we go up, we're, we're learning more and more about them. Like, so far, you know, we we've been fierce, impressed with the with the energy coming from them, with the enthusiasm, with the with the drive, with the bunch of players we have. Right, okay. Where what would you see a Division Two B team? Like I mean, are they behind on strength and conditioning? Are they behind on a touch? Are they behind on confidence? Do you know, like what, what do you what would you target with them? Bit of everything well, maybe. Well, ultimately you're you you're you're looking to you're looking to target all areas. You know, um we we we've all all McNichol in doing the strength and condition who's a, a top class operator. So Unfortunately, we're looking to get them in, in in as good condition as possible. You know, that's being done at the minute. From a hurling perspective, when we go up, we're looking to get, you know, speed of hurling, speed of touch. So all the time, all the drills we do are, are, are looking to push them on, push them on, test themselves, quicken up the hurling, quicken up the hurling, you know. And and the, I suppose the third thing is belief. Like, you know, you know, some people might, might turn around and say, oh, well, you know, the, Hurling's all about the the bigger counties. Uh, you know these lads are are fully fully committed and and are are just mad about the game. Like and we're we're looking to just bring them on, bring them on to a level, you know, higher than where they've ever been. Yeah, Joe Quaid is over the Westmead hurlers, and he thought confidence was a huge thing as well. He thinks that the hurling is there a lot of the time, but there's just you know you know the kind of thing where you always think other counties are doing doing things better than your county and that even works even if you're on similar levels but like I suppose in hurling it's magnified when it when you're a few levels down you just think you're so far off then then maybe you might be yeah look I, I think the key thing is is not to be looking at other counties I, I think the key thing is to is to build a bond among uh, among among the panel you know and and get the belief and get and, and get the honor and get the drive in in the Derry jersey and and you know, we can see that in the way they train. We can see that in the, the way they've played. And look, at the same time, you know, the, there's a, I think there's a huge amount more to come out of these out of these players. Like, and you, you got to bear in mind, like, there's, you know, there's lads that have won Ulster titles and 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 pushed on, like the likes of the Slough Neil lads and that. So, you know, there's, there's quality through the panel, and it's I think the key thing was getting the best lads on the panel, and we feel we have that now. So. So now what we now what we need to do is just just work on all them areas technically, tactically, strength and condition wise, and belief, and and try and push them and improve them as as best we can. And and the most important thing is to enjoy it. Yeah, the 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 unfortunate thing about the slack nail fellas is that some of their best players like Brendan Rodgers and Chrissy McCaig will be seen more as footballers. Is there any negotiations you could do there, or maybe probably with the schedule of the the leagues now and everything, the day of dual players is probably over. Um, yeah, look, you know, Christy is uh, Christy is captain of the football team. We had conversations with him. You know, Christy's going football and it's as simple as that. There's, there's no wishing. We, we wish him luck, the best of luck and on he goes. Uh, Brendan Rogers is, is looking to, <coughs> excuse me, looking to, uh, Hurl and and as I say, he's footballing away at the minute. We we left him and let him let him football away th- through the league. And as I say, you know, he was out training with us last night. So you know, uh, from a point of view of we we don't want to be flogging them players. We don't want to be we don't want to be pushing them in a direction where they don't feel they want to go. If they want to hurl, they're more than welcome to hurl. If they 
don't want to hold. We're not going to put pressure on. Them. All right. So Brendan Rogers was training with you anyway. So like he's trying to keep his options open and and do a little bit of both if possible. A little bit maybe like Keith Higgins in Mayo who plays football predominantly but plays hurling whenever he can. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You keep mentioning enjoyment. Like I mean, that's obviously very important, and, and clearly, um, it's important for any squad. Yeah, like, like you'll you'll feel that energy from it. If they if 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 they're enjoying it, they'll work hard. If they're working hard, they're improving, which 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 means ultimately they're they're you know they're they're feeling good about themselves and know that they're getting better and better and better. And and you know once you get by in, and and I suppose again it's. it's you know yourself with a squad like when it comes to when it comes to games you're looking you know you've a squad of, of, at the minute we've a squad of kind of 37 in around that you're 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 picking a match day panel at 26 so so you're leaving lads out there as well so you gotta you gotta be dealing with them making sure that they they're looking at the bigger picture and gonna get the chance and then you've lads who aren't getting around so like you're dealing with different I, I suppose different emotions to players especially when it comes to the to the league games and then I suppose more so when it comes to the championship but um, you know ultimately you know if you're if, if you're fair with them all and, and you you give them the feedback and you and you you're, you're looking to better them all and you know any outside influences is, is, is dealt with and you help them as best you can I, I think they, they will enjoy it and, you, and, and that reflects on the pitch yeah, exactly. Come here, so you've 37 on the panel. There's only six senior clubs in in Derry, so six senior clubs. So you'd be averaging six from each senior club maybe and, well, a few intermediates thrown in there as well. So you, you're not, it's not an embarrassment of riches. It's like, you know, well, I think Carlo only have four senior teams, so it's not quite at their level. They're really batting above their weight. No, well, you're looking at, you're looking at six or seven, maybe eight, eight senior clubs. So it's, 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 you know, it's it stretch across them. Like right? you'd have a good lot of Snockley lads, Kevin Lynch's lads, Banner, Balanus Green, um, a couple of Kula lads, Lavi, Namaha. You know what I mean? So Swatcher. So you've 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 a good array of clubs. Like and as I say, you know, in fairness, to them, from what we've seen, like the the the, you know, when it comes to club championship, they can go with each other. But when they when they come in the gates, of, come in the gates of own bag and they go and train, and they're 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 dairy holders. Right, okay. So, like, it's just a small area, I think. Is there, like, I mean, it's all in the Glen Shane Mountain area. What, there's a few clubs one side and a few clubs on the other side. The city do, wouldn't be very strong on the hurling. Well, it wouldn't. Now, Namaha would be the big club in the city, like, but, um, yeah, predominantly it's all out around the, around the, the, the say, the, the spirits there. But, uh, but um, yeah, look, they're, they're, they're mad about their hurling, like, the, the top class facilities and they, and, you know, they're committed. I saw a headline in the local paper before you started in the league. In it was uh, is it the Derry Journal? It's the local paper up there, and it said hurlers on media lockdown ahead of league opener. Um, I'm just <laughs> I'm just wondering because I actually retweeted it out. Um, just wondering where that came about. Well, no one would have known about that until you tweeted. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, look, it was the you know. It was simple enough. I think we were only we were only up there. I think ten days, and and they were looking looking for interviews. All we were trying to do, because in fairness, we went in late enough. It was only over the Christmas that we met the players. Like, right. So, really, we were trying to get concentrating on on the on the the first league game was which was the game against Down. So, uh, you know, I think I think it was a bit more taken out than what it actually was. All it really was was look. You know, just let us. Let, you know, because we were t- we were trying to get to know these lads too. Like we were going up. You know, we 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 had a lot to do. Like trying to trying to get to make sure we had the set up right, make sure we had the team right, trying to analyze players and get to know the players as quickly as possible coming into the league. So as so as we had the team right, because effectively we were probably we were probably to go to two or three months behind a lot of other counties. Like so. Um, right. So I think there was a lot more. <laughs> there was a lot more got out of that than, than what it actually was, and so I think uh, all that was parked aside once once uh, those conversations had after the down game. So, 
it wasn't it wasn't a big deal. No. Okay, so the, the media lockdown is over, anyways. That's a, that's a, you can you <laughs> can you can announce. <laughs> I don't think this lockdown it was just parked at, parked at the gate for a, a week. <laughs> right. Okay. Now it's not just you I'm tackling on this. I've tackled Michael Ryan. I've have a pet hate about this uh, these kind of lockdowns. But anyways, I, I said I'd I said I'd ask you. So you have Warwickshire next, right? Just to finish up. Um, like on the league, you beat Kildare, which was a huge win. Like they're Christy Ring champions and just had come down from two ways. So like you're sitting pretty, you know, well. Is travelling away to Warwickshire, is that throw up another co- whole can of worms about staying in a hotel the night before and, you know, a, a different experience or the lads used to that? Look, there's, there's um, uh, travelling wise, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely different. If we, if we look at the Kildare game, to be honest, we were probably lucky enough to win the Kildare game. It was a, a tight enough game, you know. Kildare had uh, had goal chances. We we had chances, and we were lucky enough to come out on the right side of it. But in fairness, we were lucky enough to come out the right side of it. So, um, I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be going mad about that win because it, it could have gone either way, really. Um, going to work, sure, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely different. There's a bit of travelling and 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 play the game, and and uh, you know. Down went over and they and they, and they got a hard over there. So we, you know, we we've been totally focused on on being right for for Saturday. Like and, and as I say, travel arrangements are in place. We we we'll get over there and we will be rightly set and and we will go with the game. Like it's it's an important two points because it w- it would leave us leave us in a good position. So it's it's vital that we try and attack attack the game right and 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 hopefully we get the result. Yeah, well, listen, we'll be keeping our eye out on the Derry Hurlers results for the rest of the year. So best of luck with it anyways. And uh, well, with a leash man in charge, I'll, I'll definitely be supporting Derry anyways. So all the best for the year, Johnny. Thanks for taking the call. Good stuff. Thanks, Colin. Good luck. Okay, Paddy Power predictions. So we're starting off in Cusick Park at two o'clock on Sunday with Clare and Wexford. Um, Wexford have really dug themselves out of a hole actually like I mean you know they've had two good two good wins and they're now completely kind of safe um, Clare on the other hand have only got one win and they kind of could do with another one even though there's no relegation although yeah. I've heard read a good one today lads you know there's a relegation playoff out of 1A even though there's no relegation no, no so you can't make this stuff open. up no there is I didn't know so that so the match w- the match will mean nothing but the winner will be seeded higher than the loser for next year when they when they judge oh, around the, the divisions, yeah. whatever. Anyway, so we, we can look <laughs> forward to a, re- a relegation final. I was I was reading a piece during the week about from Peter Duggan. I always like when lads do interviews, and I t- there was one quote which I thought really summed him up, and he said, "It's just about getting back to feeling like you can do anything." that would be where I find my edge. And I see Peter Duggan, and you can tell me what you think of him, as a streak player. That when mm. he's on, oh, yeah. he could do anything. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And for him to almost admit that, you know what I mean? Mm. When he gets into the groove, like maybe he did against Galway and Crow yeah. Park, that there, there's nothing he can't do from the sideline, the, f- the fancy ones. But it's about him mentally getting getting there yeah he nearly he, he strikes as a player where he has to play on the edge and he can't really go in with a game plan because he, he strikes he doesn't really know what he's going to do himself and that's when he's at his best you know like that point yeah. he got was ridiculous but like you could never preempt you're going to score a point like that and most lads would have got rid of it miles before he did you know so I definitely, he definitely looks like a confidence player when you're playing against him but uh, it's that's something you'll have to work on because if the, if the game's not going for you within 10-15 minutes you have to get out of your own head and just go out and let loose and Maybe he'll that will he'll mature a bit and get used to the game and because th- that that doesn't last long it doesn't give you longevity with inter inter county because too many lads you would be man marked over and he's going to be a marked man now because he was so good last year he has to get used to that you know that way yeah. so he has to be used to getting the sporadic score and then getting into the game eventually rather than just or I'm hot t- I'm hot today that's you it can't, you can't blow hot or cold no and that that's so. that's important Cheddar I suppose and like if you like a confidence player. You can't base your game around confidence because that can get knocked. Like, mm. I mean, you base mm. your game around the basics and your good movement, maybe, or whatever you do in hurling. Um, you know, like, the, I just want to get back to feeling like you can do anything. But what about the days you don't feel like you can do anything? Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, it's, mm. it's an all or nothing kind of mind frame. And maybe I'm being un- unlucky to him. You always tell me you want to see the context of these <laughs> quotes that I pull out, Cheddar. <laughs> oh, I'll, put, I'll put another question back to you, Willie. Tell me a player that's not like that. Mm. Yeah, well, I think fellas who maybe uh, know there's uh, like what Michael said that 
you don't know what to expect from him really even in the system he kind of is a free spirit the way he floats around and free spirits don't know exactly where to be within the game plan if you know I'm, 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 a being, I'm, a, I'm a making myself in any way clear <laughs> I, 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 I don't know look I, I suppose look Peter Duggan first of all I, I did see the article William and I thought it was a very very honest article um, dealing with a lot of things outside hurling yeah. that, I very good that I thought was very well put together <coughs> and uh, you know very welcome to see um, you know from a serious hurler that um, you know, he had that honesty to be able to talk about things and I think that would be very helpful to a lot of young people. Just quickly before it jumps into my head, did you see the part where he wants to start up his own landscaping business yeah. and at the moment he's, he's working Is that pure GEA? Yeah, like, oh, really here, look, yeah. well, you, can, you can look after the grounds in Ennis yeah. first anyways and that'll get you going. And at least he didn't say car. <laughs> 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 He'll have business now anyway. <laughs> Sorry, go on, Cheddar. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. You, you reckon he might be transferred to <laughs> yeah. Cork there? Yeah, the exactly. Cycle. He was a grand um, good, Nick. Look, he's a young player. Um, he, he's an integral player to, to Clare, I, I think, because of his ball-winning ability. And look, you're looking for a consistency here, but look, if, if you're managing against Clare and Peter Duggan is that type of player, you're probably going to double-team him and puck outs mm. and all of that. And whereas last year he's winning a lot of air game and all of that. You know, this year, you know, you've a, you've a plan to actually stop that. And he just, you, you might say he's not as consistent, but it's not to do with that at all. It's the other team have, have figured out how they're going to play against him. Um, I, I, I remember actually we played again. He was very, very young at the time. We played Clare below and Ennis now. They, they, they beat as well the first year I was with Leash. He was very impressive that year. I mean, that's five or six years ago. So I reckon Peter is 25 or 26 now. And I, I suppose I suppose if I was to say about him, um, you'd probably like to see maybe a little bit more of a hard edge to him. He's a big player. Um, and, you know, I, th- I think that would, you know, give him more consistency if that's if, if we can use that word. And I hate using that word without backing it up with good reasons because, you know, it, yeah. it just means nothing really. He was pretty consistent last year. He was. Oh, he was. He was excellent last and year. And he started to come into the team and the team is play, playing in a different way. And, um, you know, he was very, very important to him. And you're sort of, you're sort of um, you know, marking him out for being inconsistent with maybe his first 20 minutes in that game in Croke Park. Uh, but look, what Clare player, you know, wasn't consistent during that period. Um, so I, I, I think we're being hard on him, to be honest with you. I think for a big man, he's a very, very skillful player. Um, I think oppos- opposition teams and management will be marking him out now, particularly for the air game, because he's strong there. And you'll see him being double team, or you'll see somebody just tapping the ball to the floor and, and, and a colleague picking up that ball. And then you're wondering why P- Peter Douglas not getting on the ball more. Um, so I, I, I think, and I go back to that to that mental state. I mean, I think in, in sports psychologists would call it flow. Um, but it's very, very difficult to get that regularly right throughout a whole lot of games. You know, I could name on one hand here the players, maybe maybe Henry Shefflin, maybe. There's not an awful lot more of them um, that would get into that state of mind where just things seem to, you know, you're, you, you seem to be in a flow the whole time the game's going for you. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to make Peter Duggan here um, yeah. a I Christy Ring too mm, early in his career. Yeah, I, I didn't want to be, uh, for that really to turn out to be critical of him. I yeah. th- think Michael mm. started that off there and I just jumped I just. Jumped on. I, it was more about how his mind works that he kind of is aware of when he gets into that mind space that he can do anything uh, it was more kind yeah. of complimentary I was trying to make oh, yeah. it out necessarily than I do take the point that he obviously is very much a confidence player yeah absolutely and, and, and Cheddar hit the nail on the head there really. like he's so good in the air what happens is like as a forward in the half, especially in the half forward line when the puck is going to land on you all the time you nearly want to mark a player who's also good in the air because two of you go up with your hand and it gives you more of a chance to catch a ball Right, because there's no holes up there. And but what's happening? What's going to happen, Peter? Now, and it has to happen if you're marking them. You're not going to challenge for the ball at right. all. You're just going to knock it down. And it's very difficult if you're not winning prime position because they'll have players waiting under that break all the time. So his main way of getting the ball last year was catching, fielding the ball from puckouts or high balls coming in from the full back line. That's gone now because you can't allow him to do it because he's so big for Clare and they haven't got that many ball winners on the half forward line. He was the main one. So if you stop that, you're going to stop Clare. It's a huge part of their game. So he is going to get so much more attention than last year. So like, it's definitely going to be more difficult. It's that second season thing where he was so good last year. He's, he, it's going to be very difficult to back that up again this year. But he, he'll find a way. He will because he's an excellent player. So mm. he, I just said I, I hope his head doesn't drop too early and he, he learns to deal with that that pressure. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Fair enough. Right. Mm. Pr- quick predictions on this, lads. Paddy Power has clear one to two favourites. Obviously, Cusick Park is a difficult place to go. Wexford are two to one outsiders. Davy going back to Clare doesn't seem to get any headlines anymore. It's just like I mean, it's not it's not even a distraction anymore. But uh, who do you fancy here, Cheddar? Quick. I don't, uh, Claire and her own, uh, Claire and Ennis are very very difficult to beat and Claire need to win they need to bounce back yeah. uh, after last weekend and, and going back to that Davy, 
um, factor, um, Woolley. Um, there shouldn't be. Um, all our Clare players, I would think, have savage respect for Davy and for what he did for them. Um, and I know he would have them for, for his own players as well. Of course, they're going to be competitive. He's not going to walk into Ennis and, and, and give them a free pass um, on Sunday. So I, I, I don't think that that Davy factor is just something that yourself in the media do sort of build up for a storyline every now and then. Um, I, I think there would be just too much respect from all those people with, for, for one another and what, for what they've done for one another. I think Claire you're, you're in the media now as well, by the <laughs> way. We're all, we're all here in the media. So like, don't start pointing the media you, finger at me, each other. <laughs> well, you're the one asking the question, yeah. sure now, Willie. If you want me to ask the questions now fair enough you're, off, you're <laughs> off doing stuff for RTE as well I don't, what do you call that Shatter? I call that media work I, I, I only call that representing the hurling community <laughs> really <laughs> um, no back to the serious stuff um, I think the Clare um, the Clare to need that bounce back and they're very very difficult to beat there now Wexford have made some changes to their team mm. and have done really really well and, and um, you know I know Tipper missing a player last Sunday and they had to come from well back but they did dig deep and they know Aidan Nolan's point to, to win it is going to give him a little bit of an extra pep in their step this week as well yeah so who would you go oh you go for Clare here at home yeah. what about you Michael I'm going Clare really. I, I agree like, Wexford Farm is better they're hurling more, but it's more important to Clare yeah. they're home and they have to, they have to win ok so. great stuff the other, the other big one Tipperary Kilkenny it's probably the biggest game of the whole weekend I think Kerry Galway in the football is on as well I'm not sure which I think Tip Kilkenny is getting the, the live game which is fair enough this is a huge game this is a huge game in 2010 is it a huge game now, Michael? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a massive game. Will you like? It, it, it's so Taking hard to call. Taking on less significance though, has no, it, or am I being? No, maybe just because it's in the league. But they're two massive teams, and the supporters will, will love to see this game. And I can't wait for it myself. After Kilkenny being beaten by Limerick and sort of bullied them in ways throughout the game, I think they're want to they're going to want really want to bounce back yeah. against Tip. But I fancy Tip. I think like they they hurled well. They were a man down against Wexford, but they still hurled well, and they're improving with Liam Shady. So. I, I fancy uh, Tip. Tip are four to nine favourites, according to Paddy Power, and Kilkenny are nine to four. Over two to one, you'll get on Kilkenny mm. on this one, Cheddar. Yeah, um, look, it's a very, very hard on the call. I think it's a very, very important game for both teams, but not necessarily just because of the history that's between both teams. Um, you know, both need to fix a couple of things: full back um, and a couple of positions in the field. Um, both of them t- certainly need to find styles of play because they're missing a couple of players. So Kenny probably have less of a concern about that because of the quality of player to yeah. come back there. Um, but I, I think if you look at Kilkenny last Sunday, I mean, Limerick scored two or three just before half time. Look, that would capsize any team, even even Kilkenny. Um, and they were, they were neck and neck now. I know they didn't, they sort of faded away a little bit in the second half. Um, but Kilkenny have done well in Turles against Tip. And oftentimes when the chips were down there, they've done well against yeah. them. Um, you know, so I, I think it's really, really hard to call. Um, and I think you know if Waters playing in the forward line gives him an outlet there in terms of air game and that um, look I think it's going to be it's, it's a point either way um, I just think that you know maybe Kilkenny going there particularly after last Sunday um, you know that they'll have that little bit of a dog about them that they just need to dig out a result out of there um, you know look, you could say the same about Tip after mm-hmm. last Sunday as well so you know it's only the same thing for both sides look I, I'll just go to the other side of the fence I'll probably give it a t- to Kilkenny by a pint but it's very little to call here Okay there's a bit of value in that just on the, this I t- thought Eddie Brennan did some good analysis on Kilkenny now he showed one example of this I'd like to have seen four or five examples of this to see that this is definitely a problem but it was cornerback I'm not sure which one maybe Tommy Walsh or something had the ball and it shows it was kind of showing what Kilkenny did and what he should have done and like I mean he gave us a short little uh, stick pass to the half back line I'm not sure which half back got it but when he got it he was under a little bit of pressure so he so he threw it up and threw it over shoulder and drove it down now Paul Murphy Paul Murphy Murphy. so Walsh neither made the support run nor was Murphy going to give it to him nor was Murphy if you're why didn't Tommy Walsh just launch it if Murphy was going to launch it so like this is where the confusion lies and like say say the message from Cody or Mick Dempsey or whatever is right lads we want to use the ball better we don't want to drive it down saying that isn't enough like you mm. have to actually get out and coach it and practice it and say look Paul that's not what we want you to do here mm. like uh, I'm I'm wondering is would that even be highlighted in Kilkenny isn't oh, definitely th- de- uh, definitely because the fact that they're trying that that short ball is means that like that but Cody, the fact that Murph, but, if, but he tried it but, but didn't Murphy go after it could have hit the ball Oh, Murphy could hit the ball where Paul Murphy hit it. Like, there's no, there's well, no point it. in that. Like, you know, and 
the support run was there, William, the space was there, and it was very good analysis because that's exactly where the halfback should have been popping at them because you're, you're coming onto a ball at full speed, no one's going to get near you, and then you can look up and ping, ping a ball. Perfect. But you're getting rid of sort of decades of uh, mentality yeah. here, like, and it's very difficult. To, like, like, like with the Dublin scenario, like, Kenny have never hurled this way, and they have to because they haven't got the ball winners in the half hour, and especially with the lads missing at the moment, they haven't got the ball winners there, so they have to go short. But if you do, you have to you have to a hundred percent implement it. And Paul Murphy, you've seen it over and over again in his career, that ball over the shoulder. But he's always had the likes of Richie Power or Richie Hogan or someone up the line who can win it. And yeah. it's not there at the moment. So I, I, I don't know if it was just Paul Murphy feeling under pressure there and throwing the ball and getting out of the back line. Or or does he not a hundred believe hundred percent believe in that method yet? But yeah. yeah, they have to because they won't they won't win games playing the way they are at the moment. Well that's thing, it's neither here nor there Cheddar no. then at that stage, is it? <laughs> <coughs> well, that's an interesting point in its own right. Um, you know, you kind of confuse styles um, mm. or you need to be a very, very experienced team to be able to do that, to be able to switch over in midstream. Um, and I, I just keep going back to the point, I suppose, and, and you know, Michael has made it here. Um, you know, if you're consistently playing in a certain way and that suits the team you're playing and suddenly you're missing TJ Reid and Walter and, and Colin Fennelly and that and they don't have that level of ball winners and there are players, I suppose what you're really missing there is that um, sort of a, a, an understanding of the type of ball that's going to come up there and that's only built up over you know a lot of training and a lot of games together um, so so you know look Brian may not be that terribly concerned about this because he knows that the players that are coming back in will fix the problem that you've just described um, but I, I'll just go back to your point Willie you, you, you can't have a sort of a mismatch of different styles and I'm not saying for a minute that Kenny would have under Brian um, but uh, but you can't have that. It needs real clarity about roles. Um, you know the, the ball you're expecting up the field, the ball you're expected to put up the field, and all and all of those things. Um, so I, I think and back to your point, if you are going to change something like that, you cannot talk about it. You got to rehearse, rehearse, rehearse uh, exactly what you're going to do here, so it sort of comes second nature to you. You don't have to think it out. It just that's just the way it happens. Yeah, and I think yeah, moving on to Limerick and Cork, that's exactly where the point Limerick are in now. It's second nature to them. Mm. Tom Condon's even doing it like catching a brilliantly inspirational ball and a great temptation would be to launch that yeah. and get another cheer mm. but he's mm. tapping that down yeah. to Dan Morrissey in centre half back and it's mm. been played beautifully into mm. the corners to Galan like they just have it down like I mean they're, you'd imagine they're 8 to 15 and Cork are 15 to 8 here we'll get quickly we'll get predictions on this one uh, like it's that, very think, hard to look past Limerick I think that's because you look back at the Dakle Kenny and it, it was shown over Christmas there again Dakle Kenny Limerick game in Turles last year um, the amount of balls that was put into Limerick and the amount of balls that was put into the area where they got scores from um, versus the amount of balls that Kilkenny put in that, that they, they got scores from was was very, very different. Um, and look, it, 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 you know, maybe, I mean, Walter was missing last year and, you know, some of the lads were only after coming back and that. Maybe the result would have been different if you had those type of primary possession winner and players up there. You don't know. Um, but, but certainly the statistics in that game told a very different story about the distribution of ball and the type of ball that actually went into the forward lines. OK, we're all going for Limerick here. Or anyone see Cork? Mm. No, Limerick. Sauntering through this league, waiting for the hard ground, waiting <laughs> well, for the sun and the yeah. rebels and the... There's no if there's no supporters there they don't want to perform they're not <laughs> in, they're not too interested they've only they got one goal and it's unusual and and they're just Cork are struggling at the moment but the big story will really is, is like is Limerick like they've started 24 different players this year so far like last year in the championship campaign they had 27 players that played throughout it yeah. eight of them haven't even comp- played a minute this year yeah but the, like the panel that John Coyley and the, the competitive environment he's creating there is incredible yeah like and whoever's coming in are doing as good if not a better job than the lads who are missing. So like it's very hard to look past Limerick. I know it's only February, but yeah. such a young panel and they're so competitive at the no, moment. No, it is, it is. I mean, you, we can't make judgments throughout the league because we we did that with Tipperary before and yeah. maybe even Galway, and it doesn't work out like that. But everybody talks about the, the Kilkenny players to come back. They talk about the Galway players to come back. Yeah. Limerick have a longer list of lads no, off from all Ireland winners, and no. nobody. You know what I mean? They're just seamlessly. Mm just continuing on so yeah. like I mean it's it, it really is incredible stuff I, I, I think they were very emphatic um, against Kilkenny um, and they certainly made a statement of intent there against uh, Tip too though they beat Tip well yeah, in the oh, second absolutely. half you know, I, I, this year, this year uh, you know, um, you, know but you just you know you won't know until a couple of months time was that the glory after winning in All-Ireland because sometimes that's sometimes that's sustained you and I'm not saying for a minute like, or Limerick are a brilliant brilliant team winning All-Ireland you don't win that without being really great just one comment on Cork um, I think John Myler might be happy enough. He got a win last Sunday. 
Um, and uh, you know you can't stay going uh, trying players and testing players mm. and losing matches because eventually that hurts you and you lose momentum and you lose a little bit of belief and all of that and the fans lose belief in you and so on and so on and there's knock on effects of that but uh, you know, just 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 stand back for a minute. He's got Alan Cadigan uh, back hurling. He's got Tim Mahoney as centre back. Um, he's got Aidan Welsh in the full forward line. He's got Luke Mead, who's definitely improved his performance over the mm. last couple of years. Um, and look, Steve McDonald's back. And Steve McDonald, a really really good man marker, tight marker. Um, you know, so look, he's five players probably that he has more. Th- you know, so what killed him in the All Ireland semi final last year was just lack of strength and depth, really, in the terms of the players coming in. Well, he definitely has sorted that out. Um, so he, you know, him, he, I'd say he's happy enough with where things are with Cork as well. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Offaly Galway lads, I'm not throwing this to you because Offaly are going really badly, yeah. and Galway will win that one. Big one for us. Cheddar is Carlo Leash. This is in. Um, Dr. Cullen Park very disappointing that it's on at the same time as the football game against Westmead so you're splitting the least support straight away which is probably going to hurt the hurlers for the, for the people who follow both maybe I'm wrong on that cheddar I'm not sure the footballers will be slightly better supported so that's very very disappointing this is a huge game it looks like uh, Marty Cavan is going to be out he did his hamstring last week you don't get back in a week from a hamstring mm, no, no matter no, what no matter what type of hamstring they had a fella, Dermot Byrne, who was only brought on the last day. He was got a straight red card for a pull after 52 minutes. Like, I mean, this will put Leash into a quarterfinal, Cheddar, if they win this one. Well, it puts both of them into a quarterfinal, uh, will, will if they win it, if either of them win it. Um, um, look, it, it's a hugely important game for both teams. Um, you know, Carlo, I mean, we've spoken up Carlo genuinely and honestly um, in one of the shows here recently. Um, they're certainly the most improved team in Ireland um, in, in terms of hurling. And their success has proved that in terms of Chris, Chris Ring, Joe McDonough, and now stepping up through. And they're playing the Leinster Championship this year. Um, but I, I just know from my own time that if you could get to a league quarter final and get a performance out of that, it's a fantastic platform then to approach the championship for this type of team. It might be different for little Kennys and Tipperary's and that. Um, but, you know, you, you need some things like that going for you to just, you know, build belief within the team that and, and, and momentum within the team and get everybody pulling in the one direction and that. So it is a very, very important for them. And, you know, even just take Carlo. I mean, they're going into a Leinster Championship against some serious team and they're going to have an array of assault off of that, off, off of that championship. Um, but to be knocked back and, um, you know, knocked back in, in, in into a relegation playoff maybe with whoever else, you know, wouldn't be the right way to go. Now, look, I'm not just saying this is a least person and performances um, and their success over the last year and the fact that the game is in Carlo where they drew with Galway recently you know, makes some obvious favourites for, for Sunday but I, 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 the first half of Leash against Offaly um, I thought at least on some good things um, and you know they, they certainly should have scored a lot more for the for the creativity that they had within their team and if they had they would have probably you know won easily against Offaly now their second half performance wasn't as good it would take the first half performance of Leash to beat Carlo um, and you know so Leash are going to have to win the Carlo on Sunday with you know max performance from every single player and anybody coming onto the field I think to win the game but if they did that and they get into a league quarter final it certainly is a great platform then to, to you know build for your championship later on in the year it does and I was talking to Tommy Fitzgerald in the gym two weeks ago there and he was saying there's about 14 lads that could be in there that aren't in there and like a league quarter final cheddar like these fellas could start sending in text messages going look m- my work commitments weren't as bad as they were or you know whatever excuse they gave not to be in there which I am surprised a manager with the standing of Eddie Brennan hasn't you know what I mean hasn't been attractive enough to make these fellas want to commit that didn't commit I look, look, Uli, sometimes, again, you know, I, I'm, I'm always slapping down general suggestions. My apologies in this, Uli, but I'm always slapping down uh, things like that because, you know, what are the real reasons here? Like, I know some of these players and there are some genuine personal reasons that I cannot commit. Sometimes that is business. But th- there's also the other thing, and, and, and this is a wider issue, that the, you know, the goals for Leash in a hurling team, they're, they, you know, they're in the Joe McDonough um, and, and so on, they're just not as attractive as the Kilkenny's and Tipperary's what we've discussed here for the last half an hour and I, I, I'm just going back to that old chestnut of mine that you know the people that make decisions in the G8 I, I, I'm, I'm absolutely sure they don't understand the thing that drives players in these counties and if you look at Carlo 
um, you know, look, their success last year from coming from the base to where for the last two years, you know, has driven, um, you know, a real interest in hurling in Carlow at the minute that even the likes of Marty Cavan is not going to go to the States this year, um, whereas the previous year he did. The reasons that players take those type of decisions is that they just don't see enough at the end of the whole year to, to commit so much. <coughs> this is full on, full time for everybody. Yeah. And it's a huge, huge commitment and a huge sacrifice from players. And I'm not saying that, that, that that's any right wrong with that it should be like that you know the the, the, the um, I suppose the prize here for to play for your county the prize to play for your county is so big and it should be so big but sometimes the product at the end of it is not as attractive the carrot is not as attractive for some counties and in that in that area you have to work much harder to motivate players and work in a very different way you cannot walk into a uh, um, a Carl or a Westmead and Leash and, ju- and and just say well look they're going to play for the county and everything's going to be grand you've got to get in behind talk to them find out who their friends are talk to them f- talk to their family understand absolutely everything about the player before you even go to the player to talk to them and, and, and find out is there something here that we can do in the background that can make this a little bit easier for the player to play with the county and make it more attractive and hopefully over time when you get all of those things sort of wired up then you get the competitiveness and team competitiveness that you're looking for so uh, you it's mistake, very difficult the mistake Eddie Brennan made is he didn't go up for a cup of tea with the Keenans up in Camrose like you did ah, no, no no I wouldn't, I wouldn't no, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm this, joking, no, I'm no, joking. No, this is a very serious business yeah. for me yeah. uh, Willie and, and uh, you know I wouldn't simplify it like that to be honest with you and I know um, uh, look, I'd be gobsmacked if any manager didn't do everything within their power to make this happen. But sometimes it just won't happen, and you just have to move on. After some period of time, you just have to move on. You can't keep just coming back and knocking on the door. Yeah, exactly. All right, last game then is Dublin Waterford, lads. We can't spend any more time. We've talked about Dublin. We'll just get a quick prediction off you on this one. Really important one, Michael. I'm going Dublin because it's so important, Wooly. It's in Parnell Park. I think they have to win. I think just just for their own. To get that bit of belief, as Scheller said earlier, just to get that b- b- bit of belief in the squad and what Manny's trying to do, and um, they need a performance this weekend. So I'm going Dublin. Okay, you go Dublin. You know, I would agree, I would actually agree with uh, uh, Michael in this one. Yes, that, and because it's in Parnell Park, um, yeah. you're you're very very difficult to beat there as well. <coughs> um, um, and actually, well, that's an interesting um, that's an interesting st- statistic now to look at. Um, you know, in terms of home venues, you know, how important is that to teams? Definitely, Parnell huge, Park and Ennis is, 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 yeah. is, and it's an important game. You know, Watford are a serious team, and yeah. a lot of people write them off. I don't know why. Um, and Parg has them in a good shape, and that, and you know, so I think it'll be a cracking game. But I, I just think that uh, you, as your Michael has said, is right that Dublin needs a little bit more, and we'll dig a little bit deeper yeah. for this one. All right, great stuff, lads. I'll go for Waterford for what it's <laughs> worth there in that one. Um, that's always time for this week. We'll be back on Monday as usual um, with a review show. We'll talk to you then. Good luck.